Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to do my most anticipated science fiction and fantasy for 2022. Yes, I am filming this early, but that's because the titles for the first half of the year have already been announced. So I'm going to be talking about books coming out between January to May and then when the books for the later half of the year get announced, I'll do an updated video for this. But I wanted to record this because I think it's helpful, especially for those of you that don't necessarily receive review copies to find out what is coming out. So you can decide whether or not to pre-order these books and also if you want to request them from your library hopefully you'll be at the top of the list. There are some really exciting books coming out and I'm going to be focusing mostly on science fiction so I have 15 books for sci-fi and then five books for fantasy and that's not to say that there aren't a lot of amazing fantasy books coming out but I feel like there are so many other lists that are focused on upcoming fantasy so I really want to make this video primarily about science fiction. But I want to give the usual disclaimers that these release dates are based off of North American dates, where I live, and of course they are subject to change, so don't come at me if a book gets delayed. And otherwise, I think that's about it. Timestamps down below, but I hopefully you will find this helpful and watch it all the way through. Let's get started. First, let's start in January with science fiction, and I want to talk about Deep Dive by Ron Walters, which is coming out from Angry Robot Books. And this is about a struggling video game developer who gets a chance to try out a new virtual reality rig. However, something goes terribly wrong, and when he tries it out, he loses consciousness. And when he awakes, he discovers that his daughter has disappeared. From that setup, it certainly sounds like another version of the Dark Matter book by Blake Crouch which I personally really enjoyed so I would be okay if it goes in a similar direction to that and I gotta be honest I am a sucker for books involving virtual reality while not perfect I have been always chasing another book that will give me similar vibes to Ready Player One so if this book can deliver in either category I will be so excited and yeah really looking forward to giving it a try Next we have How High We Go in the Dark, which is a sci-fi book that is set over the course of a hundred years following multiple perspectives. And it is following an incident where an archeologist unleashes a terrible virus while he is working in the Arctic. And the story then follows a hundred years after where humanity is trying to rebuild. It sounds really interesting. I have gotten to appreciate these more generational style stories where you really have more the idea or setup for story and then you have multiple people or multiple perspectives that are showing how humanity would react and respond to something like this. And of course I'm definitely a little bit intrigued by the premise because it certainly sounds more like a horror story but I know that this one is classified as sci-fi so I'm not expecting that virus to go in supernatural directions but if it did I would be okay with that too but probably not. Next up we have Light Years From Home by Mike Chen. 15 years ago, a family goes camping and the father and brother disappear. The father returns a few days later saying that he has been abducted by aliens, but the brother never returns. The two sisters that were on the camping trip have stopped speaking to each other because one of them believes that their brother simply ran away and just never came back. And the other one possibly believes that there was an alien abduction and she has devoted her life to investigating that. I'll be honest, this book is definitely giving me vibes of Daniel Krauss's book. Unbent Heaven and I'm really curious to see where this one is going to go. Is it going to go in the direction of aliens or do something else? And I have read Mike Chen before. I enjoyed his time travel story so I'm definitely eager to give more of his books a try. I expect this one to be a bit of a thriller and I'm yeah definitely looking forward to reading it. Next, I want to talk about Goliath, which is set in the 2050s in a time where the Earth is starting to fall apart due to how poorly we have taken care of our planet. And so the wealthy people are getting off the planet and migrating to better places. The story specifically follows those that are left behind and forced to salvage through neighborhoods and look for scraps. And it's really a story about class and privilege. And I'm excited to read this one because of course it's an own voice story by a very prominent black author and specifically I think that it's going to make some really interesting conversation because I've read other books that have addressed this too. The fact is that space travel does tend to favor those that are more privileged, those that are more educated and there are certain factors that certainly lead people to have the class privileges that they do so I think this book is going to be highly topical and I really think it could be a favorite so very excited to check it out. 
Next we have Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes and this is out by Tor Nightfire and this involves a crew of salvengers that receive a distress call and they realize that it is for a luxury liner that has disappeared many years ago and they are very excited because they believe that they are going to get rich off of this adventure. However, when they get on the ship, things just aren't quite right. The lights are flickering, they're hearing whispers in the dark, and it's the question of whether or not the ship is haunted. This has been described as the Titanic meets the Shining, and yes, it basically sounds like an amazing book version of a horror video game, and I'm all here for that. People are always asking me for more recommendations for space horror, and I really hope that this book delivers because it has so much potential. This is the only book you're going to see that will cross over between my two anticipated releases because obviously it's also a piece of horror so I'm going to talk about it again there. Now moving on to February we have The Blue Beautiful World by Karen Lloyd and this is set in a future where the earth has been ravaged by climate change and the story particularly follows a group of diplomats who are being trained using virtual reality technology in order to prepare for the possibility of alien first contact. It's all supposed to be hypothetical, well, but perhaps that technology and education is going to come into effect and become very useful sooner than they expect. I've never read Karen Lord before, but I've heard her books tend to be very optimistic and I believe very character focused, so I'm interested in giving her a try. And if I start with her newest release, that seems like a perfectly good place to begin with her work. Hopefully I enjoy it. It's an interesting premise for sure. Next we have Stars and Bones by Gareth L. Powell, and this is set 75 years in the future where the Earth has become inhabited due to climate change, which I'm noticing is a theme in a lot of these 2022 titles. And so humanity has left the Earth and is now traveling around the galaxy in generational arcs. The story specifically follows one crew that receives a distress call, and when they go to check it out, they possibly find something that is threatening humanity. I'll be honest, this sounds like a really classic space opera story, one that I've perhaps read before, but one that I'm happy to read again and again. So so I'm very excited to check this one out. I have read the author before and really enjoy some of his ideas, so I'm really looking forward to this. And I'm hoping it's the beginning of a series because it definitely sounds like the kind of story that could be very expansive and hopefully fill the void that The Expanse by S.A. Corey is going to leave in our hearts very soon. Next we have Mickey 7 by Edward Ashton, and this is about a disposable employee who was sent off to various dangerous missions because if he does the company that he works for just simply regenerates his body and sends him out again. I think that this book is supposed to be quite funny. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm hoping it's going to give me like John Scalzi vibes. And I think it's also going to be a great commentary on workplaces where employees can be rather disposable and this story just takes it to another level. Just sounds really fun and I'm here for an entertaining sci-fi adventure. Then we have Pluto Shine by Lucy Kessick, and this is set in a future where Earth has begun to colonize other planets in our solar system, and now they are turning to colonize and terraform Pluto. However, when they start to do that, there is a saboteur that is causing problems and delays, and the story also involves a mute nine-year-old who possibly has a secret that, if it comes out, could really drastically change the process and future of this terraforming plan. I don't know what it is about this one. I just feel like it's a little bit perhaps underhyped. I can't even remember how I heard about it, but it sounds so good and just could be a really good story. Again, I just want to know what that secret is, so I've got to check it out for myself and find out. Then we have The Misfit Soldier by Michael Mammy, and this is described as Ocean Eleven meets a John Scalzi book. It involves a soldier who isn't so good at his job, who is always pulling these small cons on the side in order to make some extra cash, and one day he gets the opportunity to pull a big scam that is going to bring in a lot of money, so he pulls together a ragtag team of misfits in order to pull it off. It's supposed to be quite fun, full of adventure, funny, and it is a 
stand alone. It might be a little bit more lighthearted than some of the science fiction books I'm normally drawn to, but whenever you mention a comparison to John Scalzi, I'm very excited for that. And yeah, it should be really fun. Who doesn't love a heist story? Then we have The Circus Infinite by Ken Wong. This is another angry robot title. This is set in a future where a man runs off to the pleasure moon in order to get away from people that are chasing him down. However, once he gets there, he gets involved with a crime boss and somehow ends up in the moon circus. This book is described as queer space fantasy and while it might be more fantastical than the sci-fi I normally am drawn to, I gotta say between the premise and the cover, I am definitely attracted to this one. So I'm very tempted to check it out and see if it's as wild and crazy as that synopsis makes it sound. Then, since I keep referencing John Scalzi, I should probably let you know that he does have another book coming out in March. He has The Cashew Preservation Society. This is set during the global events of R2020, following a boy who works as a food delivery guy, and that changes when he gets the opportunity to get involved in an animal rights organization, but it happens to be for a different dimension. The premise sounds absolutely crazy, bananas, and I'll be honest, with a different author I would be kind of concerned about this book but John Scalzi just has a really good rhythm when it comes to writing funny different science fiction ideas and so I really think that he can pull this off and I'm all here for it. Some people are not as into reading very topical things that are set around the present day but I really don't mind that so I can't wait to see his take on the current global events. Bring it on. Then we have Sweep of Stars by Morris Broaddus and this is the first book in an epic trilogy that is set in a future where a group of humanity has broken off from the main population of Earth. They have set off to colonize another place in order to to form a utopia. However, that is easier said than done and it sounds like this new society has their own set of problems. This book sounds very political in nature. I think it's going to be a big commentary on our social structures as they are today. I understand this is written by a black author and I'm always looking for a diverse own voices perspective on these type of topics. So I'm looking forward to this one. I think it's going to be a big buzzy release when it comes out and I really want to check it out. Then moving on to April, we have The Blood Trials by N.E. Davenport, and this is the first book in a duology that is a science fiction fantasy inspired by African culture. It follows a young black girl who has to survive a bunch of brutal trials in a society that is both misogynistic and racist in order to become a warrior. And this is a story that incorporates both magic and technology, so I'm very eager to see how it all plays out, and yeah, I just definitely want to see it because it sounds like a good mix of a lot of the themes and ideas that I really enjoy reading about. Then moving on to May, we have Under Fortunate Stars by Ren Hutchins. This is set at the tail end of a long, brutal generational war with an alien species. The story is told from the perspective of a smuggler whose ship breaks down in deep space. He appears to be out of luck and in trouble until another ship comes along. But this ship claims to be from the future, claims to be from 150 years from now. And the story goes from there. It sounds like a really fun premise. I am so curious to know know more about it because the premise really doesn't give away a lot and the cover is beautiful which never hurts and yeah I'm just excited to see this one is coming out from Solaris and Rebellion so I'm very eager to give it a try. Now switching over to fantasy and I'm only going to focus on five of my top top priorities in terms of the beginning of the year and I'm also purposely excluding books that are sequels and that is not to say that I'm not excited for a lot of sequels coming out. A few that come to mind include the final book in the Founder series by Robert Jackson Bennett and of course the final book in the Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu but I think for those of you that follow fantasy you're probably already familiar with those series and so it's that I want to focus on the beginning of new New series that I am really excited about and hopefully you will be as well. So starting in January we have The Starless Crown by James Rowland. This follows a girl who is sentenced to death after predicting the end of the world. She then teams up with a drunken prince, a soldier, and a prisoner and the story goes from there. This one I'm very excited about because I'm hoping it'll have a bit of a science fiction bent to it even though it's classified as fantasy and I'm just intrigued if it does have a post-apocalyptic or apocalyptic angle to it, whether or not her predictions are correct. And I'm just hearing really good early buzz and I'm very eager to know more about it once I get a chance to read it for myself. 
Next we have Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. This is the first book in a duology that is all centered around Chinese mythology. It follows the daughter of a woman who stole the elixir of life from the Empress and so now the daughter has to be hidden away in order to protect herself. And at the beginning of the story her powers or magical abilities begin to unwake and so she has to go on the run and ends up in the royal area where she goes undercover under a different identity and learns magic alongside the crown prince. And I'm excited for this one. I'm having a feeling that it's going to involve a lot of romance. I think that there is going to be some sparks between her and the prince, just my guess. But I'm very eager for it. If you don't know, I love fantasy that has a diverse aspect to it, especially if it's Asian inspired, which this one promises to be. And again, it's only duologies, so I'm looking forward to a short and sweet series that has a lot of potential to be a favorite. Then we have Engines of Empire by R.S. Ford, and this is a epic steampunk style fantasy that involves magic that incorporates machines as well as feuding and fighting guilds. And I gotta say, I'm intrigued for this one because it sounds really similar to the setup for Foundryside by Robert Jackson Bennett, which is one of my favorites, and so I'm hoping it will give me similar feels to that. I'm really hoping for a hard magic system where they're going to incorporate the technology and it just sounds so good. So strong potential to be a favorite, especially because it's coming out by Orbit, who rarely steers me wrong when it comes to their fantasy titles. Then in March, we have All the Horses of Iceland by Sarah Talmy, which is described as a historical fantasy epic that follows a Norse trader who goes to Iceland and is followed home by the ghostly magic of the land. This is described to be the origin story of horses in Iceland, or at least the mythological version of that story. And I'm very intrigued by that because I haven't read a lot of fantasy set in Iceland. It's an area of the world that has always fascinated me. I would love to go visit. So in the meantime, while I'm waiting to arrange that trip, I am going to have to live vicariously through more books. And this one sounds right up my alley. Very excited to give it a try. Then finally for fantasy, we have The First Binding by R.R. Verdi, which follows a storyteller and a dancer who meet in a bar to tell the story of how they unleash the first evil in the world. This one just sounds really different. I expect it to be a little bit more literary, a little bit quieter. It's probably not going to have a lot of action, but for whatever reason, it really intrigues me, and so I want to give it a try. It just sounds so different, and that is always what I'm looking for when it comes to fantasy stories. So that is it for this video here. I would love to hear of the books I talked about, which ones are you most excited for, as well as any other 2022 releases that you're looking forward to, whether they be sequels or otherwise. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I do read a lot of science fiction and fantasy, as well as horror and thrillers. And so my intention is to read and review as many of these titles as possible and let you know which ones are worth your time and money. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it around online. I'm hoping it'll be a good resource for other readers and I should mention that when the rest of the books for 2022 get released I will be doing a follow-up video talking about the end of the year and I'm also planning on doing a similar video like this for horror and thrillers so when that is available I hope that you stick around and check it out otherwise thank you so much for watching I will talk to you again soon okay bye bye